Hey guys, welcome to my legal classes. This is Ganesh Pujari and today I am going to cover one of the important and interesting aspect from the Code of Criminal Procedure 1973 or CRPC which is charge. Now charge is defined under section 2B. I am going to cover that. Along with that I am going to cover section 211 to 217. Charge is basically covered from 211 to 224 of CRPC. But I am going to cover section 211 to 217 in this session and there is a separate session available on joiners which is from 218 to 224. With that let's get into the first line. Section 2B of CRPC says charge includes any head of charge when the charge contains more heads than one. Now if I say that is the definition or meaning of charge one cannot understand anything. But fortunately, unfortunately, that is all available under 2B. So now we have to go out of the law to understand what exactly the term charge means. Now charge means an allegation imposed against an accused. Now Watson law lexicon says charge means to prefer an accusation against someone. Now a police officer gives a police report under section 173 of CRPC. Uh, which is called charge sheet. Now the case law that you can refer for this is K. Veeraswamy versus Union of India and to make it very easy a charge means statement of specific offense. Now why a uh, charge is prepared? What is the purpose of a charge? To inform the accused about the offense or offenses he or she committed so that he or she can defend himself or herself and answer for the same and the legal provisions regarding charges are embodied under uh, chapter 17 of CRPC between section 211 to 224. Now what are the requirements for a charge? There are three important requirements as far as charge is concerned. The first one is there should be precise formulation of the charge. Second one it should be very specific and clarity should be available. Uh, on all the acquisitions which are made and the last one framed after the enquiry. These three are the very important requirement as far as charge is concerned. Now let us move to 211, section 211 to understand more on the charge. Section 211 is one of the very important section when it comes to charge because it explains the contents of charge. Section 211 has seven subclasses and I am going to briefly explain them. Number one says it should state the offenses and then number two says if specific name available under any law, IPC or any other law, the name of the offense should be mentioned. Three says if such name is not available under any law, in such case the offense should be very clearly mentioned in the notice that you are going to give to the accused. Number four says the law and section should be very clearly mentioned when you are preparing a charge. Number five says the fact that the charge is made equal to a statement that all conditions constituting the offense had been fulfilled in a particular case. And number six says it should be in the language of the court which is going to be used. and Seventh one says if there was previously convicted offenses by a person such conviction should be mentioned because that will help the court to decide the increase of punishment accordingly. Now the important case law that you can refer when it comes to contents of charge Mohan Singh versus state of Bihar where it was held that where in a charge no mention of section 302 of IPC was there but mentioned that the accused has murdered the deceased then all the requirements of the charge were considered to be mentioned and the requirement of section 211 subsection 2 was complied with. With that let's move to the some other important aspects of charge. Section 212 covers the particulars of time, date and person. Now when I say this I will give an example of a murder. When a murder happens a date of the murder, the time of the murder or who is the accused and who is the deceased all such information need to be mentioned in the uh, charge. Now case law for that is Shashidara Kurup versus Union of India 1994 where no details means no opportunity to the accused and it is like the denial of natural justice. So charge should contain all the details so that accused can answer accordingly. That's very important. 
Now, 213 says manner of the offense. If something is not covered under section 211 or 212, in such case, manner of the offense will help to decide the uh, applicable offense as well as the punishment. For example, if, it's, if, if there is cheating and we don't have clear information as for the section 211 and 212, in such case, we can define the manner so that we can arrive to a punishment. Now, the Section 214 discusses about words in charge taken in the sense of law under which offense is punishable. Whenever a charge is prepared, the offenses, the words used for offenses should very clearly defined because with the offense only we can arrive to a decision on which punishment is applicable for such offenses. With that, let's move to the next slide. The next important aspect that we are going to learn is errors. What if there are errors in the charge? For example, we referred a wrong law or we referred a wrong section or maybe we have defined the offense itself very wrongly. In such case, can we alter the errors? That's what precisely discussed between section number 215 to 217 of CRPC. What does section 215 says? It discusses about the effect of errors. It says for errors in the charge, the charge is not deemed to be illegal unless the accused is completely misled by it and it has caused a failure of justice. That's very important and section 464 of CRPC reinforces the same. Now court may alter the charge at any time as for the section 216 but few things we need to keep in our mind when I say any time it cannot be after the judgment. Any time before the judgment court can alter the charge. But Whenever court do so, it has to inform the accused about the charges changed and it can be a new uh, hearing altogether, new trial altogether once the charges are changed and the new charges will be continued as the charges for uh, that case. And court may either direct a new trial or adjourn the case whatever way it thinks fit and uh, process ac accordingly. Now recalling of witnesses when charges are changed are discussed under section number 217 which says both the prosecutor and accused will get an opportunity to recall all those witnesses once the charge are changed. For example, I have called Mr. A as my witness earlier with a old charge but now the charges are changed. In such case, I can call again Mr. A to be witness in my case because this is a new charge which is being discussed as well as there is an opportunity to bring new witnesses in the case. For example, Mr. X was never a part of uh, witness in the previous case, but now as the charge is changed, I can call Mr. X as my witness because this is a new charge and new witness can always be brought in the scene. That's all about the errors and alteration. You can consider this video as first part of charge. The second part which is very interesting that is rejoinders which is from section 218 to 222 and there are two other provisions 223 and 224. I have discussed in another video. Please watch that video so that you have the complete concept of charge with you. It is not that I am completing there. There is 228 which discusses about the framing of charges. I am going to explain all them in my future videos. Thank you so much for watching me. If you have subscribed me, good. If you have not yet, please subscribe me. Please like, share and comment my videos. And if you want to watch the same content in Hindi, please subscribe my other channel, Kachi Hindi Pakki Law, uh, where I have tried explaining these things in my Kachi Hindi. And uh, the videos there will come by October 2019. I am working on them. Uh, thank you so much and all the very best.